Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here with us today, and thanks for the conference chairpersons. Today, uh, our talk, our presentation will be about orchestrating better health and how can we do more for our patients on hypothyroidism and uh, with Euthyrox new formulation. Our speaker today is Dr. Mohamed Milat, consultant endocrinologist and head of department in Alain Hospital. Dr. Mohamed, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed, and thank you for the chairpersons, and thank you for uh, Mac for hosting this uh, session. Um, today, I'm tasked to talk to you about the uh, Eotrox new formulation um, over the coming what? over the coming 25 uh, minutes. I would like to give you an overview of the hypothyroid uh, this uh, hypothyroid problem the scale of the problem, overview of hypothyroidism treatment uh, shortcomings, the current problems, and then uh, why do we actually need new levothyroxine formulation, and then we'll talk about the new levothyrox uh, formulation. So um, it is quite uh, striking that the history of thyroid uh, gland is, is quite short compared to um, the history of medicine. So as you can see here from this uh, uh, diagram, it's only uh, quite recently in the 1900 that uh, uh, our early experience with the use of thyroid extract to treat uh, thyroid problems. And then uh, is quite recent by the standards of medicine around the 19th, uh, early 20th century, 1920, when uh, uh, levothyroxine was uh, uh, isolated and characterized, and then the speed of uh, 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 the scale of the, uh, the discoveries started to uh, to unveil. And and over the coming uh, over the following eighty years, uh, uh, further development happened until uh, late last year, a new improved formulation of levothyroxine was introduced in the market. And I will talk about. Uh, why was that uh, uh, required? Uh, global prevalence of hypothyroidism really varies from uh, quite low, as low as the 0 0.25 uh, per 100 uh, uh, per, uh, percent to up to just under 5%. As you can see from this uh, 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 world map, uh, we don't have data from all over the world. But where we have data, you can see that the color uh, blue is, is it, its darkness depends from where you're describing the data. And there are multiple variables uh, that affect evidence, uh, prevalence of hypothyroidism. And not the least is actually where you're talking about which population is their uh, prevalence of iodine deficiency or not. And as you can see in the Southeast uh, American uh, territories where iodine deficiency is well described, you can see that there is higher prevalence of uh, hydrothyroidism. Where there has been significant work is actually in the UK and the Scandinavian countries. And you can see that uh, due to the improved availability of uh, TSH, uh, uh, more sensitive and ultra-sensitive testing. You can see here in the UK over the last, uh, 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 since 2005, 2014, um, you can see that in the four uh, countries that makes the United Kingdom, uh, here is the, uh, the described percent total of population um, treated for hypothyroidism. And there has been only very slight um, increase of uh, uh, discovery of patients or uh, people who are being treated uh, um, uh, for hypothyroidism, but the overall prevalence remains below 4%, which goes on with the described uh, uh, global prevalence. The problem of uh, hypothyroidism is associated with both under and over treatment, and this is mainly because of the shortcomings of uh, the available treatments. And as you can see here, multiple trials in this slide and the next slide, I'll show you that uh, people are either under or over treated. 
So you see excessive therapy is quite prevalent, uh, anything from um, one in five to uh, up to one in 10 uh, patients are uh, over or under treated. And this can uh, be associated with quite significant health issues. And this is another, uh, uh, at least 10 studies that showed similar prevalence. So um, just under 60% of patients who are being treated uh, for hypothyroidism are either under or over treated. And this is quite staggering. Um, this compares very well to, uh, or rather not very well, because this is not an outcome that we would like, uh, compares to uh, what we currently do in, in terms of treatment of uh, um, um, uh, diabetes mellitus as well as uh, dyslipidemia, because as you know, uh, just under 60% of patients uh, in the best treated uh, populations are, uh, are well treated for diabetes. And likewise, uh, uh, up to 60% of patients uh, uh, with uh, hypothyroidism, which you would think that it's a, a straightforward disease, uh, it should be treated well, but it is not, as you can see from these uh, um, wide varied studies in different populations. So you could say, so what? What's the problem if uh, we don't treat uh, hypothyroidism very well? It's actually quite problematic because you could see here, um, if you overtreat uh, people with hypothyroidism, even if you are within uh, the presumed target of treatment, there is higher prevalence of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, atrial fibrillation. So the percentage of uh, uh, treated patients with hypothyroidism uh, on the x-axis, the larger number of patients who have hypothyroidism, there will be a larger number of uh, people with atrial fibrillation. This is rather rather uh, an indication of uh, 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 a possible association, uh, but we're not saying that hypothyroidism is associated with atrial fibrillation. So we need to draw a line on this. So uh, why treatment of hypothyroidism, uh, which is very supposedly to be very simple, using one simple tablet that's taken in the morning, if you take it on empty stomach and all of that, uh, which we, uh, we always tell our patients should produce good results. Why it is not producing the favorable results that we wish? Because of the, let's just remind you that uh, uh, levothyroxine is a very important hormone that works on uh, quite a uh, significant uh, parts of our body. It works on the brain, it works on the skeleton, skeletal muscles, adipose tissues, liver, the heart, and you name it. I'm not going to go through all of these uh, uh, components of these slides, but I'll just leave it for a second for you to see that uh, uh, replacing uh, thyroid hormone in, in patients who have lost the function of the thyroid is very, very important. And achieving a steady level of the hormone is absolutely vital. So what is the mechanism uh, in a patient who have lost their uh, indigenous thyroid production, they depend significantly on the function and the balance between the different deiodinases. And I've just uh, just uh, summarized the functions of uh, different deiodinases. These are the, the enzymes that uh, con convert uh, uh, T4 and T3 uh, uh, to either uh, active form or to inactive form in, for, in, in case of uh, the IDNS D3. And there are described genetic uh, polymorphism in these uh, uh, enzymes that can affect the response to various uh, amounts of, uh, of uh, replacement of the hormones. So let me just quickly, without taking you deep into pharmacokinetics, remind you about the very important salient features of levothyroxine that affects um, uh, its uh, function. So its bioavailability is very low, so it's only 70 to 80% of the ingested dose will be absorbed at best. And its Tmax is two to three hours, and uh, the volume of distribution is about 15 liters and uh, it bounds to protein, the thyroid, uh, thyroglobulin binding protein, 
and uh, the half-life for T3 is quite long. And this is very important, uh, and patients need to know that because the dose that patients takes today could last, uh, will last in their body for up to seven days. So you always calculate the dose on a weekly basis rather than on a daily basis. So, so let me remind you quickly of the various factors that influence levothyroxine dose requirement. Gender, uh, as you can see, age, as we grow older, our requirements uh, reduces. Body weight, it's actually higher doses are required for increased body weight. We do not calculate body weight based on lean body mass. We calculate body weight based on the total body weight. Time of uh, thyroxine take, uh, uh, taking the thyroxine dose. Intake with food, which is discouraged. Patients should not take tablets with food. If there is thyroid remnant, patients who had thyroid surgery, yeah, they do very well if they had a small remnant left behind. Regulatory deficiencies, as you can see, that can cause significant problems uh, if, uh, if patients had secondary hypothyroidism compared to patients who have primary hypothyroidism. Conversion deficiency, I've told you about this. Resistant to thyroid hormone, this is quite rare. It's not significant in majority of patients. Pregnancy, disease etiology, presence of comorbidity, but very, very importantly, use of other co um, uh, uh, other drugs and polypharmacy is very common right now. And you, it, it, you will hardly see somebody who's using levothyroxine and he's on one single medication. And adherence, adherence to medications is uh, uh, up to 20%. That's one in five patients are not adherent. They're not taking their medications. So what are the pharmacokinetics of levothyroxine in special populations? I'll just leave this very quickly, but I just need to remind you that special populations, obese patients, pregnant patients, patients with gastrointestinal disorders, and as well as patients with hepatic impairment, can uh, their levothyroxine uh, metabolism and pharmacokinetics are affected significantly. Right. Let me just remind you of I don't want you to read, I don't expect you to read this slide, but just have a look. Symptoms that patients can come to you telling you that my dose is either too much or too low. It is quite varied because the thyroid controls everything in your body, the metabolism in all parts of the body. So symptoms are very, very widespread. So you need to be very vigilant, you need to ask about everything. Carbotonal syndrome, pseudotumor tumor cerebri, vomiting, fever, hair loss in case of over replacement and so on and so forth. So are all available levothyroxine uh, formulations are the same? Clearly not, because this is the uh, same dose of uh, two different uh, formulations. And you can see that the bioavailability of formulation num number one and number two are not actually the same. And there is more than 10% variation. And this can affect patients. And one of the very important uh, advices that you need to give your patients is that they need to stick with the same formulation because this drug is very difficult to maintain, let alone changing from one formulation to another. This is a long-term uh, outcome thyroxine therapy um, uh, registry study that was done in, uh, in the UK primary healthcare database and just highlighted to you down the conclusion in patients with diagnosis of hypothyroidism, there was evidence of uh, suggest clinical meaningful difference. Uh, there was no evidence or that suggests uh, uh, meaningful difference uh, between patients who are taking hypothyroidism. And you can see this but they looked at ischemic heart disease, stroke, stroke or transient ischemic, heart, uh, ischemic attacks, mortality, fragility fractures, heart failure, atrial fibrillation. There wasn't any evidence that patients, if they are kept within the treatment target, uh, 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 there was any difference. So the message from here is that you need to keep patients within the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the reference uh, target. So why do we need new formulation? Because I've shown you that very small variations in levothyroxine can cause significant market 
changes in thyroid function in people with hypothyroidism. The regulators have identified thyroxine as narrow-therapeutic index medication, and they wanted to introduce more stringent regulations, which calls for um, um, that all levothyroxine medications have to have, have, to have uh, an active drug in each tablet that is, uh, falls between the 95 to 105% of the labeled amount of the, uh, for the whole full shelf life of that drug. And the regulators requires the formulation by availability uh, of geometric mean ratios at the 90% confidence interval falls between the 9th and the 111.1%, including the 100%. So why the new EOTROX formulation was developed? It was to fulfill this new regulation and to update the specification aimed at to ensure the patient received the appropriate level of medications and to revise the specifications, uh, the revised specification aims to ensure that patients receiving levothyroxines uh, fulfills the new regulatory requirements. So the active ingredients uh, will remain the same, but only there has been introduction of changes into the excipients, the inactive uh, ingredients. So what have changed in the new formulation eothyrox? The two, the two changes in the excipients the new formulation EHRX contains mannitol instead of lactose monohydrate to enhance product stability. So then the EHRX will be, will be stable throughout its shelf life. And anhydrocitric acid has been added to enhance stability of levothyroxine over time as well. The composition of the ingredient, the active ingredient, levothyroxine sodium, is absolutely the same. The Titan specificity shown with the Eutyrox new formulation, sometimes may, may, should present patients with less fluctuation of the hormone level. And, and, and this could be beneficial to uh, the, the specific groups that I've shown you in the previous slides, specifically frail old people, pregnant women, those with thyroid cancers, and people um, of pediatric age group. So you could ask, and we should ask, is the new formulation by availability and pharmacokinetic uh, profiles are different from the old formulation. And clearly they're not. So you can see here from the uh, PK of the new um, uh, formulation, which is in the, uh, in the st continuous uh, red lines compared to the dotted lines, they match exactly the same. And this was uh, what uh, presented to the regulators and led to the approval of uh, the new formulation. Obviously, with the introduction of any new uh, formulation, it's a humankind uh, 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 nature that people will start complaining of new, uh, new side effects, although there has been no change in the active ingredient. So when it was introduced in Germany, you can see that in quarter uh, uh, two in 2019, people uh, started complaining of non-serious side effects, and then um, quarter four, and by the time there was no further side effects, and all of these side, side, side effects, adverse events, were non-serious side effects, and this is just simply because of the change to a different uh, formulation. So, just to remind you that the new formulation. Uh, will provide a new formulation tablet have the same appearance exactly, and it is available once daily regimen as, as, as the previous tablets. It's available in the same broad st strengths uh, that we currently use with the uh, previous EOTyrox. Uh, patients can take uh, under the same, uh, the new EOTyrox formulation under the same conditions. So empty stomach early in the morning, uh, no food or other medications for at least one hour. Um, so nothing has changed except changing the excipient to ensure that the drug is, uh, contains uh, the correct amount for the whole shelf life. And patients may experience uh, issues and they should contact their healthcare professionals to discuss those issues. So in, conclu in conclusion, Mr. Chairman and colleagues, the, the new Eutrox new formulation meets the tightened 
potency specifications, meeting the 95 to 155th percent specification over the whole shelf life of three years. And despite changes in formulation, patients can continue their treatment as usual while enabling physicians to provide more uh, precise prescriptions. So if you're converting the patient from the current to the new formulation, it's, it's those bare dose. You don't need to calculate newer, do, newer dose or change from, uh, from the previous dose. Um, uh, you will obviously see the patient again and, uh, and review their uh, tolerance and check their, uh, their, their uh, thyroid function because as, I show, as we shown you that this new formulation is more stable. So their thyroid function may improve, not because the new formulation is, contains more of the excipient, but it is more stable. So you might need to reduce the dose because of that reason. UTRX new formulation helps to minimize risk of adverse clinical outcomes associated with suboptimal control hormone levels. And by this, I conclude, and I'm happy to take any, uh, any questions. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for the enlightening presentation. And uh, I'm, I'm asking our, all the attendees in the hall that if they have questions to pass it to the organizers so they can pass it to me. Now I have uh, two, uh, a couple of questions uh, sure. for, uh, from our online attendees. First one is, do we need to do TSH for our patients switching from old to new formulation? Yeah, as I said, it, it will be good practice uh, because um, uh, I've shown you multiple factors that affect uh, um, uh, TS, uh, uh, thyroid hormone replacement. And this new formulation provides more stability so presuming that the old formulation may had uh, uh, may might not have been more stable, so patients may actually get extract more of the active ingredients. So absolutely, I would check the patients after six weeks of starting the new formulation to ensure that they need the same dose. Uh, so that would be good practice. Uh, I would recommend that. Yes. Great, great. Thank you. Uh, second question is, what advices we need to tell our patients while switching them to Euthyrox new formulation? I'll tell you what I will do. I'll explain to them, uh, number one, that this is exactly the same drug with a different uh, non-active ingredients. Uh, and I will, uh, my practice, uh, I will tell them that it, it, it doesn't contain lactose because I have quite few patients specifically asking me about lactose because um, uh, you'll be surprised how many people are subclinically lactose intolerant. So, so many people uh, actually are waiting for this formulation to be widely available. Um, uh, so I'll explain to them that there is no lactose in this uh, formulation. I'll explain to them that they may experience uh, um, uh, some side effects. If they do, they need to report it to me. But I will stress that the active ingredients is exactly the same. And I will book them a follow-up appointment. I normally see patients who are stable uh, with hypothyroidism in three months to six months uh, appointments. But in this case, if I'm switching patients, I'll see them probably uh, in six weeks time, just for one visit with repeat thyroid function, uh, uh, just to make sure that there is no, um, uh, no untoward uh, uh, new side effects from the switching over. Obviously, so if I may, uh, Dr. Ahmed, sure. I'll, I'll probably discourage them from, uh, from looking, uh, they, obviously they will do, they will look at um, uh, various uh, uh, online forums because there has been hoha over the uh, online uh, forums about the switching over, especially in France and uh, Germany, New Zealand and uh, other countries. So people will probably look online and they will start following the online uh, trends. Uh, if they do, they can come and talk to me about it. And, and, and it, it might be a bit difficult in the first uh, month or so, but uh, one needs to be ready. Yeah. True. Uh, actually, there is uh, two more couple of questions, but I will try to wrap it up regarding the uh, the point that you pointed is, which is the side effects. Uh, is there a major side <laughs> effect or any significant side effect that the patients can expect after the shift regarding exhibients or uh, the formulation? In general? Um, not, not that has been uh, reported at all. Um, 
So one should not expect any major side effects. Uh, um, obviously, because of the improved availability, so patients who were not compliant with their medications may suddenly become, uh, um, or, or the drug becomes more available for them. So may they may develop palpitations, they may develop uh, the effects of replacement of thyroxine. So, so if you see what I mean, they would not count as uh, uh, side effects of the medication, but it's actually better replacement of, uh, of uh, thyroid uh, deficiency. So I would explain to them, but if we're talking about side effects linked to the medications, none has been described and none would be expected, but you never know. So you ask the patients if you develop any side effects, please do report back. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, fulfilling uh, answers, Dr. Ahmed, and for you. uh, I think we're two minutes beyond our calendar. So, uh, if there's any no more questions from the audience, uh, uh, we can. I have close. a question, if you don't mind, Dr. Mohammed. Thank you for uh, this lecture. I have one question regarding for you found on uh, last period, uh, like. May I ask if you speak up, please? I cannot, I cannot yeah, hear you very uh, well. Hi, thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for this lecture. Uh, I hi. have two questions. One question, you have interaction with uh, like another uh, medication, especially like one be uh, patient have some endocrine, like Addison disease, he was on, on uh, hydrocortisone or steroids, interaction yeah. with this medication, Euthyrox. And the second question, you found any patient uh, after a couple of months, you declare the dose of Aothyrox is coming down. You found the a bit, a result, but especially with the patient uh, fluctuating TSH. Uh, after, after traveling to? To uh, this the new formulation of uh, Yes, yeah. So if, if, yeah, thank you very much for these two questions. I, I'll, I'll answer them very quickly. I'm, I'm just conscious that we are over time. Uh, so answer to second question first. Uh, yes, some patients may, uh, may experience a reduction of the dose because the, do the drug is, contains a better stable um, active ingredient. So the, uh, you may expect the dose to be reduced. So that's why you need to monitor uh, the thyroid function. And it's, it, some patients may experience a reduction in those. That's the second question. The first question, yes, steroids and other medications and uh, the drugs for HIV and uh, the drugs for, ty um, for uh, treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and many, many medications can affect thyroxine. So the golden rule, um, iron, um, multivitamins, biotin can affect uh, uh, thyroid function testing. So the golden rule is that no medication within four hours after taking the medic, uh, thyroxine. I hope that I answered your question. I'm happy uh, to, to share the presentation with, uh, with the colleagues if you, if you wish. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Thank you Thank for you. being with us. Thanks for the audience. Thank you so much.